So uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, um, we're going to try to make a, a habit of doing these on a on a regular basis with uh, with 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 timing that that allows as many sections across the globe to to join. So uh, so watch out for that. Uh, today today's main topic is to just bring you up to speed with the latest uh, um, developments uh, in the section modernization plan. This is something that's been worked on for quite some time, with a lot of um, perhaps um, consultations and, 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 and focus groups. Um, it's, uh, it's something that have reached to a level where headquarters are looking to start implementing uh, and, 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 and we're using this, uh, this, uh, uh, this session to, to, to bring in more details and, and walk you through, 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 uh, through some of the details of it and, and gets your feedback and, 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 and opinion. Um, and with that, I'll, 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 I'll turn it to Deb, our CEO, uh, to, to, to give us the, uh, the deets. Great. Thank you, Guy. And for those of you who don't know me, who I haven't met, I am the Executive Director, <clears throat> CEO of AACE International. I've been here for about two and a half years. And pretty quickly after I started here, I saw just how valuable the AACE sections are and how necessary it is to continue to uh, forge them ahead and continue realizing the member value that we get from them and how we can better support and help sections. Because what I've heard from the beginning was how disparate and how like islands sections were. And we don't want that to be the case. We want it to be more integrated and an inclusive association and I'll be learning from each other, especially in the age of COVID, we've been sharing a lot more meetings, et cetera, over the past few years. So like I said, for the past two years, we've been working on some research and lots of conversations, engaging with consultants in the association space and um, quite a few different member task forces. So I put together a presentation that I will share and certainly let me know if you can't see my screen. And I just wanna walk you through a little bit of the background and how we got here and where we're looking to go from here and then get your feedback. <clears throat> so let me see. So back in 1957, when we were founded, these little red dots represented the sections that we had. We started with five sections all in the United States. Now we are at over 90 sections worldwide. In all this time, not much has changed behind the scenes in terms of how sections function and operate and interact with headquarters, which means they haven't been keeping up with the times and, and changing based on how the world operates. So that is really the, the fundamental reason why we decided that let's really look under the rocks here and see what needs to be done to improve the processes and systems really for the betterment of member engagement and increasing member value. And we really realized that the priority is our people and not necessarily the processes for our volunteers specifically. And that the intention for, for, for sections should be to foster connections and not the bureaucracy. Many of you tell us you're bogged down in. And that sections are communities, not necessarily organizations and, and corporations. And that today's volunteer is more time pressed and has less capacity for that type of admin. And associations, not just ours, associations are, are changing the way they, they think of local chapters and sections. So what does that mean and what does that look like? So what we decided to do, and like I said, increasing member engagement is our priority. In early 2021, we retained a consultant for a year long project to really help us look at what a sustainable section model could be for us specifically, keeping it aligned with our mission and realizing, helping us to realize our vision, which is what we're all striving for. So what that entailed was, <clears throat> excuse me, initially a discovery process. So this, this uh, 
consultant and a member task force, went through an in-depth review of reports and data and surveys and conversations with the board and section leadership. We created a member task force to further examine and explore options for what the future could look like. And some key observations and findings that we learned of course, local geographic sections do offer member value because we had to ask that question to ourselves is, does this system still work for us? And the resounding answer was yes, but what does that look like going forward? So the value really that we heard from section leaders was primarily around local networking and technical training. But the most serious issues identified by section leaders, the data told us is the shortage of volunteers that you all have and receiving adequate support from headquarters. So in 2022, earlier this year, <clears throat> we took the recommendations from all that work done. So our, cons our consultant with our member task force came up with six recommendations, which I'll get into. Those recommendations went to the AACE board of directors earlier this year for adoption which the board approved and then charged the member advisory committee, which Geith is the chair of, throughout most of this year to come up with an implementation plan. Okay, we have these six overarching recommendations that we have buy-in from, from our membership and the board on. How are we actually going to implement it? Because it's, it's a significant transition for the organization. So that plan was drafted, created, discussed, a lot through, through the member advisory committee and a task force that they created. And a plan was submitted to the AACE board for their review. And now in December, what we're currently reviewing with the board is a, is a new section policy to eventually be approved by the board to make this a reality. <clears throat> so here we are at the end of 2022. So we now need to start looking at 2023 and beyond and actually making this stuff happen. And what I really want to discuss with all of you is, is these six recommendations and also with that understanding and caveat that, that next year and probably for the next couple of years, this is really a lot of that transition time and we're going to be learning a lot. And while some things where we have here in writing, there's going to be a lot of conversation still about, well, what didn't we think through related to that? And that's what we're here today to talk about and going forward. So these six recommendations are outlined very high level here. So I will certainly go into the details of them. The first recommendation is for more flexible structure. You know, what we've certainly learned since our, uh, um, our establishment in the 1957 is that one section does not look like another section necessarily. And certainly one section in the United States does not look like a section in Australia or in France or any other part of the world. So we decided that a new tiered model would be an optimal structure. So there's choice. So going forward, sections will have the choice to remain as they currently operate with added layers of legal protection for the section. <clears throat> We've engaged with our council to advise us on what that could be for you all um, and its board members in AAC or move to a more informal model, which is probably where more of the changes are going to be for any section that does not want to stay in this traditional model with um, legal uh, structures in place. So that traditional section will be an incorporated section and that's gonna look very differently for the United States versus other parts of the world and local laws in each country. Uh, which we won't get into the depths and details of that in this conversation. This is intended to be very high level. So the other model of a section is going to be an unincorporated or a section light. <clears throat> and that would be the same for any section worldwide. And that is what we're creating a new, a new section policy in our the AACE organization manual, which is our policy and procedure manual, our, one of our key governance documents. So what do those two models really entail? So this traditional model, like I said, um, builds on what we're currently doing, but provides additional protection for, for individual officers and directors and members. Um, the current structure actually offers very limited liability protection in, in how you're all structured. And the legal and financial duties will belong to the section and its board of directors. And we'll have similar requirements. The section minimum standards will, will stand and hold true going forward, whereas you will need bylaws and officers and elections 
<clears throat> in bank accounts and just and for the United States sections only, you will still need to file annual 990s with the IRS and will be allowed to remain as part of AAC's group exemption. There are lots of details that go under that again, and this is an ongoing conversation, so we don't need to address it all here, but it will be addressed in those conversations certainly will be had. And so how do we offer that that more increased legal protection for you all? And those are through new affiliation agreements with clear boundaries and clear guardrails over, over who does what, who's responsible for what, licensing permission. Um, this is really all to encourage collaboration and not, not competition, and really keeping the idea of building member value and engagement worldwide. And what we think, what we have assumptions around is that an ideal candidate for this are our larger, um, more well-established sections with high local demand and a robust volunteer pool to be able to execute on a lot of this. The unincorporated sections, <clears throat> which will be called section, section light, we've casually been referring to them as, they'll follow this updated policy in our org manual and we'll have very minimal reporting requirements. Um, certainly will not be to the level of the section minimum standards as they are now, because that's what we heard has been a drain on our volunteer pool. So there'll be a new volunteer leadership committee. The, the two basic requirements for a section light will be that they have an established volunteer leadership committee in place. So we, that we know someone's home and that someone wants to engage and a group of members wants to engage at this local level and also uh, a requirement to have a few meetings a year because what we know is that technical trainings are important for you all. There will be no more responsibility of holding bank accounts or financial transactions, no more legal transactions with the IRS and in, in the United States and filing, filing annual 990s. And the, the trade-off for that as well is that AACE, and this is true for both types of sections, will provide increased centralized support services and resources. And now I'm gonna get into to those details of what that means. <clears throat> so optimizing our financial investment is, a, is, is another key part of these recommendations because through our research, what we realized is that the $18 for member dues payments wasn't necessarily adding much, much benefit to our sections. Well, yes, of course, they need financials, certainly incorporated sections need financials to execute meetings or whatnot. What we learned is that finances were not the chief challenge for section leaders. That's what we heard. And, but having access to technology to streamline and create effective processes, upgrading the website presence, having assistance in marketing and communications were higher on the list of needs. So learning that, we think the best way to help sections is to direct membership dollars to shoring up those ladder items with improved technology and more staff resources for you at headquarters, which will help alleviate that administrative burden on, on your volunteers. And augmenting all that even further with specific activity costs in the form of a grant program. And we haven't worked out all the details on this yet, which is something we're going to pilot in the next year and see what that might look like for you all. Um, these are just two different ways to keep offering you all you all support. The third piece of this is centralizing event and engagement activity. <clears throat> a big part of that will be a new event procedures and policies with increased headquarters support. And this is really where we've defined events as three tiers webinars, an in-person condensed event, um, or an in-person more expanded event. And the details in that policy, again, which hasn't been adopted yet, outlines the different levels of headquarters support that we will be giving to you. We have a brand new staff person, Mary Catherine, who that position has never existed in AACE before. And she was hired to, to help all of you and be a front person for you. We have the professional support at headquarters with two staff members in particular who manage events. So to be able to give you real um, uh, support in terms of people who do this every day for a living, knowing that you all are volunteers doing this in your spare time, that's what we're, we're trying to do for you. <clears throat> there will also be a new section hub on the My AAC community platform where we're piloting some microsites, so websites 
what we heard loud and clear from our section leaders as well is is the, the the cost and administrative burden of having your own websites. So we're looking to centralize and produce all those for you on your behalf. And that my AACE my AACE hub will also have online discussion groups. We're just launching a speaker directory because what we also heard was you need speakers for your events and or webinars, for example, or how are you going to get them and where can you get them? So we are creating an online speaker directory that you can access and look up based on the type of technical content you want to present, location, or whether it's virtual or not, whether that person is certified in any particular area. And again, that, that website will have event support for you in terms of us managing registration on your behalf, um, the ability to give you data on attendees, prospect lists, a centralized calendar for all sections. And that data management piece, what we heard in the research is also really important so that you know who the members are, who the non-members are. So we do too, so we can help market and promote more stuff in your local geographic area. And again, this, this event program <clears throat> will have this three tier structure that we can go into more detail about. At, at a later time or after we finish this, this short presentation. Another thing we heard was that you need more resources. So this is going to be an ongoing effort by a group of volunteer members under the, the member advisory committee, as well as Mary Catherine is helping to manage this process in creating things like an updated handbook for how to get things started and keep things going in your section. An online community for you as section leaders, again, the centralized data management, making that easier for you all to glean data and various, you know, this is just examples, communication templates, whether they're emails or flyers that we can be made available to you. And it's also crowdsourcing. It's a place where other section leaders can drop stuff and another section leader can pick up and have there for you. Something else we want to do over the next year and we think is really important is to reimagine our awards and recognition. While we have sections who <clears throat> get rewarded and awarded every year, we think we can do better and we can do a bigger and better job of recognizing the amazing work you all are doing. And the, the last but certainly not least is updating our regional director role and responsibility based on the aforementioned recommendations as well. What is that what is that volunteer position going to look like? How can that leader in the organization better help our section leaders? And what does that look like in terms of how many regional directors we have and where they're located? And language, we heard language is a significant um, hurdle as well. So we want to make sure that, that that leadership and that represent, representation is there for you as a global organization. But again, more to come because a lot of those other steps need to happen first in that sort of cascade of things to happen. We will eventually be looking at the RD role as well. So just a couple of high level bullet points summarizing what it means between the difference between those two sections is outlined a bit here. Um, what I want to reinforce for all of you is that is that centralized headquarters support <clears throat> is for everyone, no matter what kind of section you are. Um, the board of directors, with all of this in mind, just invested in a brand new uh, customer management system we'll be implementing, head, headquarters will be implementing over the next year, over a quarter of a million dollars for the software that we are investing for the sake of helping our members and our sections. Um, like I said, with our new support staff person as well, the board is really seriously wanting to, to make our systems better to be able to help our people. So what are the immediate next steps? So right now we're communicating that plan, this plan to section leaders. And this is not just a one-time conversation. This is going to have to be an ongoing conversation and also drilling down into working with your regional directors and headquarters around next steps and what makes sense and explaining a lot of this in more detail. We need to work on categorizing our sections as well um, and deciding over the next few months what might work best for you. And over the next two years in particular, working on a lot of other initiatives here that, that I already outlined um, and learning as we go too, because we're gonna need your feedback on what's working and what's not working. And I will stop and pause there.
because I am sure like we did earlier today, we have a lot of, we had a really great discussion earlier and we learned some things that we're already rethinking. Um, so we'd love to open the floor for, for conversation around that. So uh, Deb, I see a question from Paul. Paul, do you wanna go ahead and ask your question? Yeah, yeah, certainly. It's great to see that almost everything we discussed two years ago has been included in uh, in what you're proposing, which is absolutely fabulous. Um, I, I I restarted the Australian section about two and a half years ago after it got closed down for whatever reasons it got closed down for. Um, and a section like would have been absolutely fantastic for us if it was available. The only issue I see is, is how, how will bills get paid uh, in foreign currency for section like? So um, you know, I can see that uh, a section want to pay for a, you know, a meeting room or something, or buy posters and stuff like that. Uh, do you have a proposed system to reimburse section lights for these sort of expenses? So it it, it will depend, and those are the details we need to work out whether it is it's for an event or not, because the the intention behind a section light is to be an informal gathering of members, um, so that there won't be formal events taking place that they're organizing on their own. So for example, um, if there's a, a regional event, say, you know, the, the Northeast Symposium up here in region two in the United States this past year, we at headquarters is sort of a pilot program to, to help figure out where the benefit would be of headquarters supporting that versus volunteers supporting that. Um, it was a really great collaborative effort. So we learned from that how we can help sections organize events, whether they're a section light or an incorporated model. Um, and where, you know, that's something where headquarters can not just reimburse a section, but we'd be paying for the, the overhead and operations for, for executing an event like that. So it really, we would really depend on what the, the thing is that needs to be paid for. But the intent to, um, that's a long way of saying the section light model is intended to be a very informal network. Yeah, I, yeah. I suppose uh, one of one of the biggest things showstoppers is money when when you start, you know, a new section, and you know, maybe saying, okay, you can have two hundred bucks a year for for incidentals that will will pay without without argument or something. But yeah, I I can see somebody wants to organise a room in, you know, if we want to organise a meeting in Melbourne, you've got a you know a hundred buck fee, or you want to print something, or you know, you want to do something, and you've got these incidentals that that even if you're in an informal section, you're still going to incur. Um, that, that would be something I, I would like to see included in the, in the section. Like, other than the rest, I think it's a great idea, and I, I think it's absolutely fabulous. Um, yeah. I'll take note of that, Paul. Thank you. You're welcome. And I see Mazdaq has his hand up. Mazdaq, do you want to go ahead and probably... Maybe as an icebreaker, if if anyone that would like to talk, just uh, you know, introduce themselves and which part of the world are they from. It's, yeah, it's always no, nice to, to get. That, to that's what them. I was planning to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is Mazda Gnichbach. I'm from Montreal. Um, I'm an associate professor at Concordia University and a member of the board of AEC Montreal. Thank you so much for this event. It's amazing uh, to hear more about the initiatives. Um, I want to raise the voice of uh, academia. Actually, for the past six years that I've been a board member, we've had a, num a good number of successful events. I'm sure you, you have heard of some of them, hopefully. Um, the uh -oh. one issue that we are struggling with is with the student membership, and that's due to the lack of waiver of the membership fees for students. Um, my apologies if it's not 100% related. I have another meeting in three minutes that I have to leave to, to catch it. And this was the only venue that I knew of that I could basically share this concern. Um, when looking at many other similar uh, associations and organizations, they completely waive the um, basically student memberships. And uh, well, if anything can be done, because the membership fee for some of the students, particularly graduate students, because our graduate students in construction, engineering and management are very, very eager and they are all ambassadors of AACI, believe it or not, like right after graduation and joining industry, they are always ambassadors of the um, AACE. So if it they could be helped to uh, basically, if help can be given to ease their membership financially, because like 
$200 or $100 is a lot of money for a graduate student, particularly like many of them international and so on and so forth. Um, so that was the short message that I wanted to, I wanted to send. Um, if any thoughts can be put into that, uh, this would be much appreciated. And I think that, I mean, the, the value added would definitely be uh, worth it. Dave, do you want to speak to what the MAC is talking about related to universities yeah. or will be? Yes, yes. So, uh, so MASDAQ, <laughs> we, we, we definitely are looking to get more engaged and involved with the industry at uh, with, with with academia at, at early stages, and and I can share with you, uh, for example, our experience in Toronto and how we dealt with this. Um, so student membership is only sixty five dollars. Uh, what we what we thought of is we can probably, as a section, uh, subsidize that, sponsor some students, and get them to volunteer. Um, in the section and help us in some of the administrative tasks in, 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 in the section, which worked brilliantly. So we got, we got the opportunity to spread, uh, to, to sponsor uh, a few students at a, at a really um, disc, a significant discounted rate that paid dividends in, in the help that they have that they have provided. Okay. So, Can I interrupt for a second? Uh, yeah. Apologies for interruption uh, in the interest of time. I, I come from University of Toronto. So, uh, and Toronto and us work very closely, particularly the student sections. We do exact same thing. We've been doing that for the past five years. I'm not specifically talking about the four or five members, I mean, student members who are quite active. I'm talking as uh, regarding membership at a larger scale. The ones who want to be engaged with, the, with, with ACI, get to know more about it. Um, if there could be um, some student membership, probably without even having access to major resources that we as paid members have access to. So some lighter version of student membership so that the students can feel belonging, like belonging to this association and uh, basically keeping uh, that on their CV, keep, like being in, engaged in the events that we have and so on and so forth for the time that they get uh, into the industry. And like I said, this uh, they, they would be ambassadors. So I'm not specifically referring, we were doing exact same thing in Montreal and worked out very well. They are fantastic, working very good, very hard. Um, and we do subsidize their memberships, but I'm talking about membership at a larger. So that, that, that's a very interesting thought, NASDAQ. And just so that you'd know, we have a task force in the membership advisory committee that is looking at finding ways to, uh, to, to, to connect with uh, the rising professionals and, and graduates and, and even students in, in universities. And, and it's an ex, uh, it's an interesting thought and perspective that you've uh, you've that you've just uh, shared with us, and we'll we'll definitely take it on and bring it back to to the group when these discussions take place. Inspired. And if you'd like to be part of that, we'll we'll pencil you in for thanks for, for, uh, okay, for some sure. of these sessions. <laughs> Thank you. Look, uh, hi, it's Lou Vidotto here. I'm from Brisbane, Australia. Um, I think your, your um, comment's pretty valid about student membership. Um, my experience is if, if they've got some skin in the game, they've had to pay some membership fee, whether it's 10 bucks or 60 bucks, they're more inclined to be active in the organization. Mm. So if they just sign up and pay nothing, then they're likely just to let it lapse or, or mm. not get involved. So if I'm paying 65 bucks, I want something for my money. Mm. So that's my comment anyway. Yeah, to, to be very clear like what the, there is a competition uh, <laughs> so when students feel like they can join aace csce aci and a lot of other organizations sure. for free then it's going to be kind of harder to to convince large group of people to come and pay the 65. i think paying 65 bucks for aac is great value compared to other organizations well, I, I think everyone on the call it's hundred dollars you know yeah yeah. <laughs> Ali, you have your hand raised. Yeah. Hi, everyone. This is Ali Olsen, he's president of BC Section in Canada. Um, hopefully, you can hear me 
very well. I get some messages that the internet quality is not good in this office that I'm sitting, but looks like it's good. So it's just a message. So uh, yes, I echoed the same message with regards to student. It was difficult for us to do some outreach and so on. COVID is a major part of it and was the major part of it. And then the universities are opening up gradually and so on. But uh, the fund is always an, an important part of it. And I think if we can fund it a bit, so we have been doing it just to partially fund portion of their membership or their, their food membership and so on. Uh, but uh, it's valuable to have some things uh, to, to encourage them to come and apply on, on ACE. Like, and I see we have done a lot, like I've seen a lot of advertisement on a PMI site. But, and I think the portion of it is this was not necessarily the money. $65 might not be like, I offered a scholarship of $1,000, no one applied. So I reached out to major universities yeah. in BC, no one applied. So it's interesting. So why they don't apply, why they don't read magazine. I apply and just, I advertised it in 10 different venues and magazine and source magazine that is for professional engineer. And so like whatever you would imagine, a single person even didn't apply. So I think it's all about uh, also advertising and uh, making sure that we mm. send a message in the right place and engage them. Outreach was a good opportunity for us prior to COVID. So we were able to engage a lot of them, particularly estimators, construction, um, management, uh, student and so on and so forth. But uh, this hasn't helped us, uh, like COVID has impacted us a lot. So I'm hoping that uh, we can get started with outreaches. And then those supports, like um, uh, I have seen all these templates from ACE to help us go and talk about what we do and so on. And um, it's going to be very helpful on that side as well. Not necessarily the money didn't work very well uh, in our side at least, but I've seen engineer, engineers or graduates that are really eager to, to join us, especially when it comes to estimating practice and so on. So, so here, what I found really helpful is anytime I'm doing an outreach, I know which department on that certain university I'm reaching out, and then I'll prepare a, one of the practices, I'll show them what is the benefit of going through estimate practice. What do you mean by that? How you can apply it? Because they have no clue how the industry is going to work out. The industry and then university connection is not very well baked in some areas. So this would be helpful. So I think this is a part that is on our shoulder. And uh, but the rest is is coordination and getting some people to get involved. It's a lot of work. So and volunteer work is is always appreciated. But it's very difficult these days with the inflation and all other things to, to pull people in and um, engage them. So I think that's another piece of it that mm. I want to uh, bring up. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. And I think we should focus on, on that, that site a little bit. Thanks. Thank Thanks, Ali. Two cents. Yeah. Thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn it to Matt Neal, because I think I see Matt had, had, has a few questions. Um, yeah. It I had a bunch of questions, a couple of them we can answer later. The two I'm looking the most forward to is additional support from kind of international leadership uh, with regards to the uh, website support. Uh, we have one that's already built and everything. Do you guys kind of have a system in place to transfer that over to wherever you're planning on landing pages or kind of what's the process for that? So we are, um, Ryan, our IT manager who's on the call now is working with two sections I believe right now on figuring all that out. So he's working on two pilot sites for, for two of our sections to figure out the best way to make that happen. So and that's that's what I mean by 2023 is going to be a, a transition learning year because there'll be no, you know, January one, the, the switch is flipped and things are magically different. We need to make sure we have the best processes in place to make sure that everything that's great about your website now, if you choose to have a website managed through headquarters, everything that's great about that is replicated in the new system. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, we've had another website kind of in the background waiting to be launched. So I'm looking forward to that support uh, to help get that set up. And uh, Ryan, if you want to, if I can reach out to you, uh, maybe get on that kind of first group of people to, to go through that process, if you're willing. Sure, sure. I'll, uh, I'll send you my email. Awesome. Perfect. The other one is I served as membership chair for the last couple of years. One of the other things would love uh, some additional support on 
is right now it's kind of a manual process to join local chapters. Is there any plan for international support for, hey, their zip code is in your area, let's get them on this list so they get all the emails and everything? So this is for, for me and us nerdy folks at headquarters. What we're really excited about with our new centralized database management system that we're that will take most of the next year to, to implement and transition from our current system to our new one, will enable all of that. So the, the data, you will be able to see as the volunteer leaders of your sections, you'll be able to log into a piece of our, our website, our backend, and see members in your area, the, the zip code sorting, all that. You'll have that ability to manage data, and we will have a better ability to help you manage that data as well. So the, the new system that we're developing on the back end can meet a lot of those needs that we just currently can't. Awesome. Yeah, looking forward to that. And then the last kind of comment is, is with the centralization of the, the money for the chapters and everything is pointing out, making sure that we kind of give the individual members a reason to avoid, join the local chapters. Um, I think there's some risk in terms of losing some revenue for grants, stipends, that kind of stuff. So just thinking of ways that we can reach out to individual chapters to encourage local chapter chapter membership and also local companies to contribute and um, host events and all that kind of stuff. Because I think that may, may be something that we lose with the centralization of the money. So just what ways are you guys looking at to kind of mitigate those risks? Yeah, and th that's a great point. And those are good conversations to keep having as well, because what... What we know from what other associations do and what we're seeing the trends in our association is we've seen member engagement drop at the section and local level. And we've had to ask why. And we do think that's because too much of your time as volunteers is spent doing stuff you don't want to or need to do. So by getting you back to really the value of volunteering and connecting with other members and connecting with the industry is gonna help shore back up that engagement and. I think we'll see engagement and numbers actually start to rise as a result. Yeah, and I think some of that's been driven, at least out here in California, due to COVID policies and all that. So I don't know how much is due to lack of involvement and how much is due to, hey, there's nothing going on. So I'm definitely looking forward to opening up in-person events this new year and, and definitely want to talk more about how kind of internationally can help drive those conversations. And I think ultimately it's going to end up being the local chapters that can find those companies, find those events and the topics that are best relevant to the local chapters. So just kind of looking forward to seeing kind of your plan on that going forward. Absolutely. That's all great feedback, Matt. And um, <clears throat> for better, for worse, for speaking up, now I've got your name. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'll be hearing from me. <laughs> awesome. Looking forward to it. I think that's it for me uh, for now. I had some other questions, but that can be handled kind of in the background. Great. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. There's a question from Marlon. Marlon, do you want to tell or, us? Or Nes or Nesto has his hand raised too. Okay. Were you asking me, Marilyn Wodzinski, the, the question I posted yes. in the chat? Yes. Um, well, in setting up our December technical event last one of the year, I, I was, you know, trying to get the word out, trying to get as many people to attend as possible and, you know, new members, people who are not familiar with AACI and, you know, just in, in having to plan all the logistics, I was like, where else can I post? Where else can I post? And so, you know, this is my first year on the board. I've been a member for a couple of years now. Um, but, uh, yeah, and just getting the word out there, you know, if someone's looking up AACI, and you go on the website, there are events posted there. Um, and I'm not sure, I'm not familiar enough to know are those like corporate held or promoted speakers that are on there? Or is there a way for us to post now what we are doing kind of locally? Uh, because, you know, a lot of these are virtual or hybrid in person and virtual. So if we can share um, elsewhere, I think that's, you know, that would be a nice option to have. I know you know, the, the vision is to centralize everything, uh, but that's maybe further down the line. So right now, I guess, what is what is the answer to, to that? We've got a, um, well, for the Australian section, we've got a LinkedIn account and we post all of our events um, through that, which works quite, which works quite well for us. 
Okay. Yeah, we, we do do LinkedIn, we do Facebook, we do our local website. Um, and I guess, I guess, well, I'm, I work with Patrick Engineering and we have offices across the country. So naturally I'm sharing across the country, not just to the Chicago chapter. You know, we have our Boston office. We're actually bringing our, our, someone here from our Boston office to speak at the Chicago event. So that's kind of what, what makes me think of like the, you know, the global level of people are generally looking at AACEI. Is, is there a link <laughs> to, uh, to the local chapters or events that we're having. Yeah, so so Marilyn, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but there's a global calendar of events on the AACE website where you can post your event there. Mm -hmm. uh, and it would be uh, available to, to anyone um, with it, that, that goes to that uh, calendar and and checks for events and they'll be able to see and, and join if they want, if it's virtual or if they are from, from the area that you are, you're in, they can, they, can, they can be aware of that through, through going to that calendar event. And, and once these uh, microsites uh, uh, are up and running, which will physically replace the individual independent uh, websites that some of the sections are are, are trying to keep up to speed, these micro websites will be automatically linked to that, to mm -hmm. that, that calendar, calendar. So they will both feed in from each other and, and you'll be able to post your event on that, on that micro site that is within uh, or under the larger AAC umbrella, which is, which is great because it gives you a more control standardized look it's it's slicker it's glossier and and it's consistent across the board for 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 all sections um, so hopefully that will provide consistency in branding and the reduction of the administrative work on 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 your end mm -hmm. okay so, thank you yeah i have seen that calendar i, I guess i didn't see that i have access to post or share content. So I'll, yes. have to, I'll have to take a look at that. Thanks for letting me know. Yes, you can. And, and you know, for each section, there's a dedicated community with a feed that you can, that will actually be interconnected with the microsite and with the global calendar. So mm -hmm. a lot of, a lot of good, good things coming mm -hmm. in, in, in yeah. the next year. And, 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 and that's, and that's part of the reason why we're pooling all of these resourcing, mm -hmm. all of these resources, and instead of having a, a half-baked solution that each section is trying to pull, we're pooling all of our resources together. Uh, AAC will have better buying power with economies of scale. They'll be able to deliver a technological solution that that can help uh, all of us uh, do more of what we like to do and less of what we don't really like to do um, and, 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 and provide a better quality for the, for the dollars that are, that, are, that are being spent. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, thank you. That's if great. I may add one thing, and the, the, the other thing that, that is very important is that we all being project people, we get moved around a lot. So if you end up in a different uh, city, in a different country, in a different region, that it is one way to reconnect with AAC and reconnect with the people that are there. So, so that's the other thing of bringing everything into the, the global mm -hmm. calendar, which is, which is really being one association and for us to kind of take over and hit the ground running to go and attend the events in Turkey or in Dubai if you get transferred over there. That's part of the idea. Yeah, and one other thing about the microsites, just just so, so we're on the same page, um, it's also, you know, I kind of try to think of it as a one-stop shop, you know, discussion posts, library posts. Um, it's all through the community that's linked to the microsite. So um, the other good thing, if, if Geif were to post a, a discussion, um, everybody within the community would get notified of that discussion. So, you know, if he wants to announce, um, 
you know, the next meeting, not just on the calendar, but also in a post, he could do that. And if you're signed up for the Daily Digest, you would get an email. So it, it kind of keeps, uh, keeps everything up to date as well, rather than outdated distribution lists and things of that nature. We do, looking at the, the clock, I know we have two other hands up. Um, Ernesto? Yes, thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Ernesto Lawrence. I'm from the Toronto section. Um, hi, everybody. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's related, my comments related to the discussion that was taking play, place right now, and is, is about websites and et cetera. But one thing that we notice is that the traffic uh, within uh, our website is, is minimum. Um, so it, it seems people are moving away from, from, from websites as the first place they will visit. So typically it will come through a link that is is distributed through social media. So the websites were what I'm, I'm concerned is that um, is that well if, if we are going to make this investment in in having this website well developed and this is really needed, then I'm very happy to hear or, or working on that. But that in, in parallel to that, my question is, are we developing a, a more social media strategy and help to the sections? Not everybody is well versed into LinkedIn, Instagram, you name it, and uh, hashtags. Uh, what sort of uh, uh, principles we should follow as a section to make sure that when we post something on LinkedIn, it, it goes, uh, it has the right uh, hashtags and the right links to attract people from, from many, many other areas and especially we're now that now that we are very interested in students and we're trying to get students more and more involved um social media is is first and foremost so um are, are we are we developing in parallel with the websites a, a bit of a, a social media uh, strategy and i understand each section is different and each country is different but it, but more i'm talking more about some some general rules and and ways of helping as uh, some training um, you name it social media that's, is quite a world um that's it and, and i know i sound old-fashioned right now but but the, that's pretty much what was moving information these days that's a great point ernesto and, and i appreciate you brought it up um i would see that falling under our volunteer resource development um one of that recommendation and shoring that up because something that um, <clears throat> I heard from the board when I was hired, my marching orders were basically under the umbrella of marketing. And so that's that's kind of been my my focus as well for, for the past couple of years. And for the past six months, we've started at the headquarters level, at the international level, investing in marketing resource development in the form of a, a consultant. And I were budgeting. Uh, the board is actually reviewing the 2023 budget on Thursday to approve it. We're budgeting for even increased funds in our marketing line item to, to, to spread that. So they've been focused on social media the past few months. Our LinkedIn page alone has grown 30% of followers over the past six months. So that in 64%, I believe, over the past three years, it's grown just by engaging these consultants in the past few months. So I could see engaging with them as we are investing more dollars over the year ahead, drilling that down into the, the section level. Again, so we're not all out there on your own island, that it's a more inclusive, we're all learning from each other. So the, the long-winded answer to that is yes. Great, thank you. Ahmed? So I'm Ahmed from Calgary, Canada. Uh, just I have a quick point that yes, I, I can see the advantage of having the using the website from AC headquarter and also all the email marketing from and this will save us a lot of money from having uh, paying for even private or for other um, service provider. But again, can we have also another services like collecting money? So if we are my, our members are going to register for those events and they have their some fees. Can also we can AEC headquarter collect those fees and then give it to us, or we have to find another platform for collecting those registrations. 
I th it's going to depend, you know, this is where the option of what kind of section are you going to be? Is it going to be a section light model? Is it going to be incorporated? And, and then what kind of event is it? And so those are all the details that we're going to have to work on also on a case by case basis. Um, because, you know, a, a section in Canada, an event may look different than one in the United States. And, and those are things we just haven't wrapped our head around yet, those details. So we're, we're going to need to work together on figuring all that out. So you can continue what we are doing now until we we get yeah. okay information. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Should we take a few questions from from the chat box? Um, so uh, we have a question from Lori. Lori Lee. Lori, are you still with us? Yes, I am. I'm just taking a moment to get off the speaker or off of mute. Um, and but just in case anybody didn't see it, for years we have sent out our you know our meeting announcements and newsletters via constant contact, and it's worked really well for us. It sounds, and then we actually have an option for them to pay when we're going to a restaurant or some even to somebody's office and we're going to cater food in. Um, we charge a nominal fee. We try not to make any money on things. Sometimes we lose a few dollars. Sometimes we make a few dollars. Um, it sounds like maybe from the way Mary Catherine responded that Ryan's going to try and set up something similar for the section light. Is that true? Uh, and I can speak to this, Deb, if you want. Um, so if, if we set up a microsite for you, each one can have a dedicated community link. So because we have access to all of the people who have selected your section, you know, to join your section, their information is automatically added into that too, which means like you wouldn't necessarily have to pay for a constant contact or some other service to have, um, to send out your bulk emails because it's already there for you in the community. Um, and it's also a directory that you can search too, and you can share your documents and post your events and all that good stuff. Um, so, um, but yeah, it, it just functions. <laughs> because I have to like call one board member and say, oh, um, hey, can you take and call so-and-so with a credit card and that sort of thing. And I was kind of hoping maybe you could collect the money and help us that maybe we can um, send the, a credit card bill directly to you all instead of um, having to, you know, just manage the money a little bit more for us. Yeah, I see. And that, that goes back to the, the other point of it, it depends what kind of event it is and what kind of section you are. And the, I mean, these questions are really great because it helps us think of the things we're not thinking about yet. So that's, yeah. uh, and again, I'm, I'm fully transparent. We don't have all the answers right now. So that's what, why we need to talk to you and figure out what we're not already thinking about. So thank you for that. Well, last week we had a joint event with two other organizations. And when I went to set up the deal on constant contact to collect the fees, uh, I needed corporate credit cards because they, had um, collection fees, they only had PayPal and WePay as options, which they used to not have that. And it's just been, it was just a little, it was more headache than what I had time to deal with. And so it, it, I have a feeling you all might tell us we were too big for section light, but typically we only have 15 <laughs> members come to sometimes 30. So that's something, and I, I know we're getting at the hour, but let's let's get together with you know your regional director, us at headquarters, to figure some of that out and have a, a more individual conversation to wrap our heads around that. Good, thank you. And, and perhaps Debs, we can we can uh, just close this call by just reassuring everyone that there will be no sudden changes. Uh, without prior preparation and and readiness, we are we are 
we are, we are starting the conversation with, with all of you to, to get a better understanding and better feel and get your feedback. And we will keep you informed. Um, you are a stakeholder in all of this. So we'll, we'll definitely keep you in the loop and we'll keep on collecting feedback from you to, uh, to get this right, or at least get a better shot at getting this right. And, 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 I, and I hope that gives you the, the assurance that, uh, that all of this is just uh, to, to as much as possible, you know, take, take the things that uh, that yet that you dislike the most out of your experience in volunteering, and amplify the the other stuff that we're all in for uh, as much as practically possible. All right, and and uh, and if you have any other questions in the chat, we will we'll do our best to reach out to you and, 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 and respond. Uh, we have the sections leader community on, on, on AAC communities or my AACE. So please, as much as you can, uh, let's, let's exchange uh, discussions, information, ideas there. We will use that platform to keep you up to speed with what, what is being uh, uh, planned and, and, and we'll continue to engage with you with these town halls to make sure that um, we, 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 we continue this communication. Thank All you, right. Dave. Thanks everyone and have a, have a great uh, rest of your day.